Hello, we've got a lot to talk about on this episode. We're talking about money and it's for a whole month of great activities and a career fair for ex-offenders. Come on back. Robin Boyce for City Corner. Thank you for joining us today. And here in the studios with me are Ms. Cheryl Walker, who is with Stiefel Bank and Trust, and Ms. Lisa Potts, who is coordinator for Money Smart Month. It used to be a week, Lisa. It, is. it, it is. just it just blossomed into this whole month of activities, and you have a wonderful uh, magazine here that uh, is being produced for the month, and it has all of the activities that are going on both sides of the river, yes, and you've got these great banks and nonprofit organizations that are involved. Tell us how did Money Smart a Month come about? Absolutely, so in 2012, or 2002 actually, the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago started what they called Money Smart Week. And so Money Smart Week takes place all across the country. And what it is, it's a public awareness campaign. It's, we want people to know how to be money smart all year round about, you know, how to get a bank account, how to improve your credit, how to invest, raising money smart kids. Every topic you can possibly think of. Mm -hmm. And so we've been participating here in St. Louis since 2012 with Money Smart Week. And like you mentioned, we have now grown. We're following Kansas City's lead and we have expanded to a Money Smart Month platform because we were doing 200 classes in a week's time. Wow. And we really were, we really were making that happen. It was a lot of work. It I was, remember it, it when was a you lot all of work. really pulled that together, but you managed to do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what we want, and we want people to be money smart all year round. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just one step toward that. We're making it a, a month now, and so now people have an opportunity to breathe a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, spread the activities out throughout the entire month. Yeah, because you had a lot of folks who were those instructors. I mean, they were hitting it from one place to the next, That's and right. they were going all over and talking. Cheryl's one of the you know, instructors, it, Cheryl, tell me, what were you? <laughs> be pre presenting um, as a member of Stiefel, um, what will you be presenting to people when you talk about money and being smart about it? Right. Well, I will be down at Clinton Peabody. Great. Um, April 7th is our kickoff. We'll be in Soulard. Mm -hmm. That's the kickoff event. This but is what I... the Monopoly game is all about? Yes. Just tell yes. us a little bit about this Monopoly. Life-size Monopoly game. We'll be playing Monopoly. All our vendors will be the actual tables for the game. Oh. The participants will come and roll a huge dice, and then they'll be sent to each table depending on what number that they that they dial. Is the little dog going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're this have is penny, great. Penny bags, guys. Yes, yes. The actual guy there, the little Monopoly guy with the cane and the hat, he'll be there. Now, he'll the purpose for doing around. a Monopoly game with reference to Money Smart, tell us how that all relates. It relates in being smart with your money and as far as buying investments like an investment property. So in Monopoly, you buy houses and then you buy hotels. Mm -hmm. And so this will teach you how to get those funds if you save, invest, build wealth. And that is what Money Smart Month is all about. Mm -hmm. All of those things are in the book, like mm -hmm. Lisa was saying. Mm -hmm. All those classes all around St. Louis, you can learn about wealth building. You can learn about getting your credit together, which you will absolutely need if you're going to buy a house. Definitely. You get a loan to buy a house. You could exactly. also save and buy a house for cash. When we're over at uh, Clinton Peabody doing those, those Saturdays in April is when I'm going to be there. We're going to talk about investing. So I'll be joined with Edward Jones. We're Excellent. going to talk about life insurance, cash value of a life insurance policy, what you can do with those funds. That's uh, James Tatum mm -hmm. from Guardian will be there with me. And then I'll Excellent. take the last hour and talk about home ownership and how you can buy a That's house. That's so important. People don't really understand the importance of dealing with money. And, and um, I know that the St. Louis um, Unregional um, uh, Unbanked Task Force mm -hmm. got its starts. You said it was about 2002 2009. when the feds when came out started. with those, those yeah. findings. They talked about St. Louis being one of the highest places in the country where folk do not have banking, banking accounts. accounts. Absolutely. So you're absolutely correct. The 2010 report of the FDIC stated that St. Louis had the highest number of unbanked African Americans in the country. 31% 
of people in this metropolitan area did not have a bank account. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that they were using what we call fringe financial services. So they were using check cash in places, grocery stores, you know, your convenience stores. And that's how they were accessing their own funds. People spend $1,200 a year accessing their money when they are not connected to a bank account. And so we came together with nonprofit partners, right. financial partners, mm -hmm. and you actually used to sit on this task force as mm -hmm. well. And so it was, an, again, it was about educating people, letting people know that you can, you know, get your money mm -hmm. if, for free. You don't exactly. have to pay to access your own money. Right. You don't have to pay to access your own money. In fact, when you work with institutions, whether they be a bank and or a, a credit, credit union, union absolutely. you can see your money multiply depending absolutely. on what kind of product you use. Am I exactly. correct about that? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of folks don't really understand that or about insurances and everything. So how soon or how early is it that uh, a person should really start learning about how to handle their money. What, what's early? As, as soon as they can learn how to talk. As soon, when they when they saying mama and dad dad, you know, bank money. You know, so kids there are, are smart. Programs that are available for young people to Absolutely. learn about money. Absolutely. Tell us about some of them. Absolutely. So the FDIC actually has curriculum for elementary schools, and so we participate in an initiative called America Saves Week which Cheryl is so fantastic at America Saves Week. Uh, we go into the schools with our bank partners and talk to the kids about the importance of saving. Mm -hmm. Children are seven times more likely to go to college if they have a bank account. Mm. And so we want to instill that message not only to children, but to parents and caregivers as well. Instead of buying those Jordans or that Xbox, consider you know putting money in a child's savings account to improve their chances and outcomes now, of going Treasure to college. Now, Tashara Jones started a fund yes, as well. Is that in collaboration? It's called College Kids. Okay. And so every kindergartner in the city that attends the city of St. Louis school receives a $50 account that's seeded by Treasurer uh, Jones. And so that I think they over 10,000 students now Very have good. been enrolled in that program and have those funds and it's an amazing program. So that's going to constantly grow. Yes, ma'am. Each one of those funds each towards one of those college funds. education. Absolutely. And as parents attend financial education classes, children can earn money to be deposited into those accounts. Kids can earn money for those accounts if they have perfect attendance mm -hmm. and get good grades. So there's lots of opportunities for children to add funds to those accounts. Mm -hmm. When you look at all of the work you all have done over the past, I guess it's about five years it's, now that you've been at seven. this. It was yes, great. I mean, you got uh, that word out there about what you're doing. Some of the banks did uh, remotes with the, some of the radio stations right, here where we right. know the audience was most affected by uh, those statistics. Right. Have you seen um, more people opening accounts, um, uh, trying to make a difference in the community with reference to leaving the um, um, cash checking places alone and come into a banking institution to do business? Absolutely. It definitely takes time. I mean, since we started, since we officially launched in 2013 to date, we have opened up close to 20,000 accounts. So there are 20,000 less people who, you know, who are unbanked uh, now be, as a result of our efforts. And so that's almost a $20 million impact on the community when you multiply that 1,200 if they were spending. Mm -hmm. Now that money is money that's circulating back into our economy. So is that all really what it's going to take is education to really get people to, uh, other than a person having a job where they can save dollars, uh, save their money, but is education the key to really getting folks to really understand about checking accounts, saving accounts, mutuals, what they all mean, insurances, is that what it's going to take? That's part I of it, yes, and, and, my, of it. and a mindset change, and right. also pe knowing that they care. You know, one of the great things about working with, you know, partners like Cheryl is that we're real, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And people are, this is, a, this is not an easy subject to talk about. No, People don't want to come and tell you, oh, I don't have good, I don't have good credit, or, okay. you know, I, I bounced a check and, you know, I, I can't get an oh, account I, anymore. I spend all of my money. I have nothing saved. Right. Okay. That is a scary place it to be. Very scary. And I don't want to tell you that I did that. Right. Okay. But so many I see people what you're do it. Mm -hmm. And so it's to get them into a savings pattern. Mm -hmm. So now it's a habit that you're saving. Mm -hmm. which should be 10% mm -hmm. of every dollar that you receive, mm -hmm. put it in savings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people really them. feel like they can't do that when, um, you know, they're, they're struggling on some of the jobs and not sure. paying very well. Absolutely. And they really, but if you sit back and you start looking at it and start mm -hmm. knocking mm -hmm. off 
certain things that you don't really need and, and that right. budget, you can put away 10%. Exactly. It's you, about you know. needs and wants. You know, Cheryl teaches a great class on that, and that's a great place to start with kids. So when you start talking about what is it that you need versus what do you really want, mm -hmm. do you really need the Jordans? What you need are, are a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't have to pay $300 for those shoes. Mm -hmm. If you have a Starbucks habit, I hear White Castle got good coffee. I don't drink coffee. coffee. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know, it's considerably higher. Exactly. And so looking at your own habits, looking at your budget, mm -hmm. where can you where can you save a few dollars? Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a lot. That's another misconception that people feel like you need a whole lot of money to right. save. It's mm -hmm. not. Cheryl mentioned it's about the habit. It is. So if you save it is. a dollar mm -hmm. a week, a dollar a day, whatever that is, now you're in the habit. And you know what? Pay yourself first. You have to. Treat yourself like a bill. Mm -hmm. When Amron you eat, when Amron bill comes in the mail, you pay them. Write a bill with Robin Boyce on it. Mm -hmm. When that comes on mm -hmm. Friday, pay her. That's That's right. Exactly. And that is exactly what happens. That's what you have to and, do. And um, this the several years back when getting ready for retirement, mm -hmm. that was, you know, there's so many of us boomers who on, didn't That's do it right, right. right, didn't stay on jobs long enough to, right. to have those nice little pensions and all those kinds of things. And you find yourself in that situation, you have nothing saved. So, True. you know, you writing, it, writing a check to myself, that's exactly what's going on, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to do that to do in that. order to really look at your future and get prepared. And I at first thought, oh, I can't do that. But I don't even miss it. Mm -hmm. you I don't. don't even miss you it. You don't. I mean, I that, and, and I've gotten yeah, right. in that habit where yep. I don't know nothing about it. I don't see it, and it's going in. Right. I don't even know how much is there. Right. I just know mm -hmm. it's going somewhere where it's safe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's conservatively making dollars and doing what it needs to Absolutely. do for my future. Right. And, uh, and, and, and in, in the end, I did something. Because I tell you, there's so many people, oh my God, who aren't even ready. Right. Folks who yeah. are been on jobs, uh, like with the city of St. Louis, um, 40, 30 some odd years, and they retire and they're not ready. Yeah. And they're That's like, oh, I need to come back to work and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to, when I'm retired, I'm gone. <laughs> right. So just, <laughs> so just imagine if we taught our kids yes. that now. Yes. Right. Talking about building wealth That's right. and closing that gap between, you know, um, income. Exactly. If we teach our kids now the importance of saving and compound interest it's important. and That's investing, right. By the time they reach our ages, we're going to be having a whole nother conversation. And it right. will be a, it'll be a wealthier community. Absolutely. It will be a community that's a lot more prepared to do some things right. even if you don't have a job. Exactly. I really feel with saving dollars like that, you'll have a whole lot more entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Who will be, who will be getting the things. My mama said to me years and years and years and years ago, save $20 a week. Mm -hmm. And that and that, that was when I was younger, 16, making a little money mm -hmm. uh, every week. And it makes a difference when you do that. Yes. And I'm so glad to hear about these different programs that are going on. The other thing that, that occurs when you save, it is stops you from putting things on credit. Because mm -hmm. most Americans are in $10,000 worth of credit card debt. If you could have taken that emergency and went into your savings That's just right. to, to take care of take that, care of it. you wouldn't have put it on and credit. And you're paying yourself back, which is so beautiful. You are. That's right. what yeah, I like. Yourself. Right. That's, That's what true. I've been doing. It's been, a great, it's been a great exercise. I thank you ladies so much for coming on thank the show. You for having um, us. People will be calling you and coming. I'm sure you all are going to have a lot of fun. And come back. we got to talk more about Absolutely. money and get folks interested in doing the right thing with money. Absolutely. Come on right. to the kickoff event. Come on out to the game. <laughs> That's right. We want to see you roll the dice. <laughs> thank you so much. Much. I Thank really you appreciate you all Thank a lot. You. We'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome, innovators, dreamers, pioneers of the 21st century. We've been expecting you to come discover your dreams and make your ideas take flight. Just like so many explorers that came before you. Welcome to the hub of opportunity. Welcome to St. Louis. Always exploring.
Hi, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner, and back in the studios with me today is Dr. Lance McCarthy, who is with the Global 1000 in Ferguson. Yes. Did I get that yeah. correct? Okay. You got it correct. <laughs> All right. How are you doing? Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I remember seeing the uh, Global 1000 a little bit after um, the... Um, I guess really, I guess the, the task force that pulled things together out there in Ferguson where yes. things were still kind of boiling out, sure. out there sure. and folks were coming together and meeting and Definitely. putting that uh, wonderful report together that they, they pulled together yes. uh, for the community, for the region. Um, and you had decided to have a career fair run at time. Am I yes, correct about yes, that? Yes, yes, Okay, how successful was that? It was very successful. Actually, uh, we called it hiring event as yes. opposed to career fair. And Ferguson 1000, which evolved into Global 1000, started after the Mike Brown unrest because we believed that job creation was a major initiative in order to help uh, plan out the community. And so since then, we started in a small church three and a half years ago with 17 companies yes. and uh, 200 people. To our last event at UMSL, we had over 1,000 people and over 100 companies. So we've evolved in our model to look at how we can look at job creation mm -hmm. and minority tech firms in order to create a solution here in the St. Louis area. Are you, are you seeing or feeling a good synergy in behind that work? And you know, moving forward. Yes, yes, folks it is. getting work and moving forward. They're getting jobs. It's not the point that we don't have jobs here. Every day, there's 8,000 jobs available in the St. Louis market. It's getting people trained and available for them. And okay. so, we were one of the organizations that were able to bridge that gap. And then secondarily, uh, one of the areas we try to increase is technology, because St. Louis is being hosted and listed as one of the top technology mm -hmm. cities in the country, we will make sure that African Americans are part of that as well. So combining the existing jobs, training, and looking at technology development in order to help our economy. Now you have a career fair that will be coming up in April, um, what is that, April 10th. Yes, April 10th. And it's going to take place down the uh, over at the Schaefer's Arena. Yes. Uh, and this career fair, is it specifically and only for ex-offenders or can anybody else att attend it? Yes. Are you tr trying to be specific with a particular market and demo? Yes, first. anyone can come, but we're focused on ex-offenders. We're working with St. Louis University, the Urban League, mm -hmm. Department of Justice, Department yeah. of Probation, uh, and Slate to come together for a region and assist those brothers and sisters who need a second chance. Uh, we know that St. Louis is listed as one of the top crime areas in the country, mm -hmm. so if we're able to have a career fair and help these brothers and sisters get jobs, we believe we can affect the economy from that perspective. You also serve on an, uh, the Board of Ethics Project along with myself, yes, and, yes, and yes. that's where we met. Um, is, uh, is it hard for ex-offenders to find jobs? And specifically, the Ethics Project deals with yes. Dr. Uh, Christy Griffin, who mm -hmm. is the uh, executive director of that board. Uh, is it um, difficult for ex-offenders when they come out of, of um, incarceration. Yes. Is it difficult for them to find a work? It is difficult. Uh, one, because of the stigma that comes along mm -hmm. by being an ex-offender, and then the skill sets. Uh, and so St. Louis is one of the cities who early on did ban the box, which means that you take off your application to say if you're an ex-felon okay. or not. Not that you're hiding it, but it allows you at least to talk about what happened and, and move that agenda forward. But yeah, it's difficult. And so we want to be able to create this career fair to assist those brothers and sisters who want to have a second chance mm -hmm. and be able to look at the opportunity. So every company that's coming to the career fair is hiring ex-offenders. Okay, so you've got these groups of folks who are willing to sit yes. down and give second chances then yes. to help out. Who are some of the uh, folks who are going to be there? Uh, we have SSM, we have Home mm -hmm. Depot, a lot of the major corporations. Our goal is to have 50 companies. Uh, I think we're about 30 right now. But we're talking to companies and saying how it's going to help the economy. I mean, we want people either exactly. to be employed mm -hmm. or to go back to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at it. It's a regional thing. Mm -hmm. St. Louis has to focus on how we can help all our brothers and sisters get jobs in order to, to help the economy locally. Mm -hmm. uh, do you find that incarcerating people has become a, a business? It is a business. Uh, quite honestly, when you look at the economic impact, when you look at studies that show they are forecasting building prisons by the time you're in the fourth grade, it is a business, unfortunately. And unfortunately, on the uh, minority and African American side, uh, we have too many brothers and sisters in there. So we're trying to right those wrongs, trying the opportunities that we can do. And one of the things that we're excited about with uh, Ferguson 1000, Global mm -hmm. 1000, we have a prison tech platform which we're teaching ex-felons, 
coding, so crime to coding. We're also highlighting ex-felons who have their own tech companies. So if we can show brothers and sisters that you can have your own company, that's another mechanism in how we can move this forward. So you're moving towards entrepreneurial yes. ideas and, yes. and deducing that Some whole concept. Some brothers and sisters are in prison. <laughs> exactly, because a lot of the things that they were uh, either busted for or, or being charged with yes. were entrepreneurial things that they Definitely. were doing out Definitely. here in the streets. And, uh, and I've heard people say that all the time, sociologists, psychologists, if I, I could flip yes. them doing what they're doing in the streets to a legitimate situation, because it's smart. Well, Most, it's a smart. lot of folks that are going into prison uh, really shouldn't be there, but they're there because they committed a crime That's of correct. some illegal whatever, whatever. But if they had a legitimate situation product, I, I really think they'd be successful companies. No, Very smart you. folks. Well, we're seeing that. We have a local company that uh, is a construction company. Uh, the gentleman is an ex-felon, mm -hmm. was able to get into the union, then create his company, and because of his contracts that he was able to get, he hired 50 new people, and half of them were ex-felons. So we're trying to show that you only can just be trained, but you can own your own company and also get jobs in the marketplace. And mm -hmm. so we just want to help that whole demographic mm -hmm. to help St. Louis uh, overall. Uh, what does it do for an ex-felon to have an opportunity to have this second chance? What, what, what have you heard in some of the, the career fairs that you've been doing and, and working with ex-felons? Ex it, it helps the entire family because when someone goes to prison, you affect the family. So if people can see an ex-felon get back into the marketplace mm -hmm. or open their own company or get a job, it gives inspiration to other people. We operate in looking at people like ourselves. So the more that we show success, the more that we show that you can do anything, the more we can show you can get a job and get a second chance, it helps the whole economy. And so people are very excited about this. Uh, actually, the night before, on April 9th, mm -hmm. we're having a uh, job revival. We want to pray for the brothers and sisters uh, at St. Louis University um, Church to talk about how inspiration can come and share and get ready for the 10th. So mm -hmm. April 9th at St. Louis University Church, we're going to do a, a job Yes, mm -hmm. we're going to do a job revival there. And then, of course, on the 10th at the Shaver Center, we're going to have the actual uh, career fair. That's, that's a really good holistic approach. Yes. Um, when looking at the incarceration situation yes. um, and going to a, a lot of the conferences that Dr. Christy uh, Gr Griffin has given, mm -hmm. it, is it true that... Um, the, some of these prisons that are being built, they say, I heard of some, some statistics, that they make more money off of African-American men and white women in prison. Yeah, uh, on demographics, they do. Uh, again, some of the private prisons have contracts with companies, and so they are paying a cents on a dollar in labor in order to supply products. So uh, it is a business. It's an unfortunate, but yeah. it's an economic impact for the community. Uh, they're selling products for prisons that are made. Uh, it, it's unfortunate how the system is, but uh, it's very profitable uh, for the people who own the prisons. So how does the community... How do uh, people who are doing the work that you're doing mm -hmm. begin to shut those prisons down? Well, a, a couple of things. One, we have to show how these individuals can get back in the marketplace. So the more we help ex-felons or anyone get a job, that's yeah. not going to have them going to prison. So that's going to affect that mechanism. Then the second area is policy. We have to collaborate as a community and lobby legislation on how we have to stop having so much of this prison mechanisms for as, as a business. How do we show people holistically can mm -hmm. benefit by not going there, or if they come out, how we can help them not going back in? Mm -hmm. So that's to be a holistic neighborhood community strategy mm -hmm. that focuses on uh, alleviating that. And of course, the ethics project does that. And this, yes, they do. Yes. Now, is it because of the, the before you get there, mm -hmm. Activity is glamorized. Yes. Well, is it, that the problem, or or is it the lack of not having certain things? A combination in the thereof. You, you know, what I mean? you duplicate what you see, and so we have to try to share success stories of other ways of doing it. Uh, right now, again, technology. I tell kids that they can make the game, they can play the game. So showing our community that there are other alternatives as opposed to the glamorization of crime and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So many ways to make money out here, so many occupations. Uh, again, there are 8,000 jobs every day listed in the St. Louis marketplace. We have to just make the community aware and start turning it around and start saying that jobs and tech is cool and hip. Yeah. And if we do that, yeah. we can be able to kind of change the, the mantra of how we look at glorization of crime. Now that's going to have to be then a constant 
yes. talking, a constant programming, a constant promoting, and Definitely. constantly, you know, really make helping people realize you can. Yes, yes. You know, and that they, you can make a difference. If they see people like themselves, they'll be able to change. And we have lots of success stories of urban youth and technology. And I think that's the key to turning this around. Tell us, about, you were talking uh, yes. before we went on the air about <laughs> one of, of the individuals with, that took on a tech firm. Yes, yes, we have a, a young man by the name of Jalen Bledsoe. He's 18 years old. He steps to the microphone, he says, I'm 17, I'm the same age my parents were when they had me. However, I have 120 employees, three million in revenue. And if you look on my uh, Facebook page, you'll see I'm a paid nerd. So we try to really a incorporate, nerd. yes, we try to incorporate <laughs> showing that tech is cool and that the opportunities are there. We, we own Facebook, we own Instagram, all those are multi-billion organizations. Yes, are. We want to show urban youth that you can be able to own it and you can create it as well with all this great talent. They could do just about anything with the technology oh, that we have today, no even with reference to music that they'd like Everything. to put together. They could do their own things and set up their own EPs online to get the music out there Definitely. or whatever it is that they want to do, talk or their own little radio station or podcast or yes. whatever they want to do. It's it's so easy to, to it's it, well, it, it is easy to do. You yes. just got to have the mindset to do it. It is. Technology is here and St. Louis is a tech hub. We want to make sure that African Americans are part of that tech hub, mm -hmm. and we really are assisting youth and urban youth on how they can code, build websites, mm -hmm. do their own companies. I always ask kids, how old is it be to set up a bank account, or how old is it be to start a, a business in this country? And it's zero. You can start it now. So we want to mm -hmm. really show that and begin more and more and more that we show urban youth that you can own your technology, you can create it, I think will help turn this infrastructure around. Is it that we don't see kids excited about it because they don't get that exposure to things and they're not told what you, yes, you're talking yes, about right yes, now? Yes. Is that where we're not we're not doing not it. Happening. We're not doing it enough. We need to expose it more Our and more. Our teachers need more. to be talking like they that too. They do as well. We, we have a great <laughs> guy by the name of uh, uh, Jared Arms who teaches uh, website and coding development at St. Louis Community College mm -hmm. area of the Saturday. And so we try oh. to get youth out there for free. Uh, so we, we try to do a lot of programs just to, to get into the marketplace and let kids know that they can build it. We have a seven-year-old chef, a vegan chef with his own mobile app. A vegan chef? Yeah, he has his own mobile app, uh, Chef DJ. So we're just trying to catch them young and show that they can do this technology development. But these are babies that are just really excited about that's, what they're doing. That's it. And you got people that are, that are behind them saying, hey, kids, this is, I mean, what is probably one of the biggest things you'd like to see happen with all the projects that you're working with right now? and moving St. Louis forward, what would you like to see? I want a stronger emphasis on black tech. We need more black tech firms mm -hmm. in St. Louis hiring black people, quite honestly. Okay. We have Worldwide Technology, which is the largest black tech firm in the yes, country it here. Is. How can we create 10 more of those? How can we make these in urban areas, North St. Louis, all the areas of crime, and make, and it make tech happen. Yes. I really appreciate you coming in, appreciate Dr. Coming Lance, out. and talking with us about uh, this great uh, career fair that's coming up on April 10th. Yes. I hope people turn out for it and learn more, and we're going to really push more for more tech yes. and African Americans going into that field. Thank that's you so much exactly. for coming on City thank Corner. You. I want to thank you for joining us today. See you next time here on City Corner. Thank you.